Let's do it. Let me do an appropriate background effect. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Illuminating Microsoft 365, the joint Pate Group and Joy of SharePoint webinar series. We have been exploring the possibilities of the Microsoft 365 applications and it is 12 o'clock. We are go for launch of this webinar and we are so excited to be doing this today. We were just <laughs> talking about how it feels weird to be doing this on a Monday, yeah. but life is good. We could do that. I think Richard and I could talk about anything Microsoft anytime, any place, anywhere. So sure. I agree. Sure. I agree. Yeah. We're going to kick off Monday on the right foot. So welcome. If you've never joined us before, we are so thrilled that you are here. Don't be a stranger. Feel free to go to the Q&A, do a shout out, say hello. Um, let us know how your day is going and feel free to ask questions as we go along. I am Joy Apple, also known as Joy of SharePoint in some small circles of Twitter. Um, I have been working with Richard. Richard, how long have you been with Pate now? It's on, it's getting in the five month range now. This point. Yeah, months. coming oh. up on five months. Yeah, seems like longer. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> Richard and I work together at Pate Group. Uh, we're both modern workplace strategists. We help people figure out how to get from where they are today to where they want to be tomorrow with Microsoft 365, getting out of those old file shares or old versions of SharePoint and into the modern world. Um, like Richard, he's been doing this longer than I have, but I've been at it for a little over 11 years um, and every day it gets better. Would you agree, Richard? Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, thanks, Joy. Uh, <clears throat> appreciate everybody joining us today. Yeah, I mean, there's so much cool stuff happening, obviously, in technology today, and the cloud has really kind of enabled all that to happen so much more easily and obviously rapidly and kind of depending on your perspective on it, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. But, uh, you know, we we just love and eat and sleep and breathe all this stuff on the Microsoft Cloud, which is a big part of why we wanted to bring this webinar series to all of you. And uh, so, as Joy mentioned, we're, uh, we're modern workplace strategists at Pate. We focus in on not just the kind of the technical ins and outs of how to get you from point A to point B, but really also why does this matter to your business? And when it comes down to it, why does it matter to individual people within your organization? Uh, so, you know, if you're if you're hoping to hear kind of all of the bits and bytes and the, and those kinds of things from us, you probably won't hear a whole lot of those types of things because we love talking about all the people side of it as well. So um, with that said, we're going to jump into some really interesting stuff today talking about Microsoft Stream. I know Joy is super, super excited about this. Uh, and what we normally do is we tend to just ask a couple of questions. We like to get some information from all of you that are attending. So we're going to start off with a little short poll. Those of you that have joined our webinars before, this is um, old news to you, if you will. But um, we've got a form up here. You can get to the link in the Q&A window. You can also get to uh, this if you're so inclined from your mobile device just by scanning this QR code, this QR code that you'll see here on the screen eventually. Um, and it'll take you to a, a it'll pop open a, a, the browser of choice on your device where you can go ahead and respond to the poll. But we've got a few responses coming in now. So, you know, we always want to know just who's in the audience today. So thanks for letting us know. Uh, I've got a number of folks here that are profiled as IT pros and some folks from the management team. So thanks again for joining the call. And then in terms of video platforms that you might use today, we we're just interested in understanding what is your company been using um, even also interested to know like what might you be transitioning to if you're transitioning so it looks like at least from some of the responses we have so far we've got a good number of uh, companies that are using YouTube which is not a surprise at all uh, YouTube's tried and true it's been around for a really long time um, I don't know about you Joy but I tend to also when somebody's asking me about what is Microsoft Stream you know I try to simplify sometimes by saying it's kind of like the YouTube for your organization right inside the business. Um, but there really is a whole lot of amazing things that it does on the Microsoft 365 platform. So YouTube got some stream users uploading into SharePoint. That's not uncommon as well, too. 
And then a couple of things just on current events we thought was interesting to know is did you or did you not watch the SpaceX NASA launch uh, or that it docked with the ISS? And so we got a little bit of half and half. Uh, that's OK. For those of you that haven't, yeah, I certainly encourage you to go online and watch the video. It's pretty uh, it's pretty incredible. So just watching history take place there. And then um, <laughs> funny here to see if you could participate in the whole colonization of Mars effort. Would you be interested in going? And so I've got a few brave folks in the uh, in the audience here saying sign me up and then others that fall a little bit more on the no, I'm good or you know, maybe I'll just wait and see what happens and that's totally fair. <laughs> but where do um, you fall? would you do it, Richard? You know, I think I fall you in the middle between changes. maybe I want to see how it goes a little and even maybe the no thanks at the moment. I mean, it's tough, right? You know, when, you, when you have kids and all that kind of stuff, you kind of you know, you're it's more than just thinking about what do you really want to do. But um, you know, who knows? Maybe they can take them all with us. And so that would be great. Um, might come to that at some point someday. So OK, so again, thanks for responding to the poll. You can respond at any point in time during the webinar. Just feel free to click the link and jump in. We're going to continue to collect those responses throughout and we appreciate it. So let's go back to slides and uh, or actually if you want to Joy kind of take over on your end. I would be happy Joy to going to drive the ship. Yes, go. it won't be as cool as SpaceX, but I mean it, it'll be fun, right? So yeah. today we're going to talk about are you living the stream? I mean, you know, I came up with these slides because it's ridiculously corny. <laughs> but you got to have fun with PowerPoint. So yes, we're going to jump into stream today. We're going to poke the buttons. We're going to talk about creating content, finding and watching content, sharing, because as we all know from SharePoint, sharing is caring. And then we're going to just talk about the fact that you can take stream on the go with the mobile app. I feel like I was ambitious adding that in because we'll see how time goes, right? That's all we can do. I'm going to confess something to you all. I wrote a blog about a year and a half, two years ago on stream when they started talking about transitioning from, oh shoot, Office 365 video to stream, making it more better. And I was like, OK, I'll write a blog about that. And it was super easy because. There wasn't quite a lot of stuff to say other than this is coming and These are the cool features of uploading videos to stream <laughs> that has changed. My friends that has changed now. You can upload a video just like we've been able to do since day one. You can also create a live event from stream. It is not a Teams live event. Fun fact, it's a stream live event, mm -hmm. which if we're talking about a video focused event. OK, cool. And you can now this. OK, Richard, what 90 days ago, maybe you could record your screen or is it newer than that? Yeah, I think it's even less than that. Yeah, it might yeah. be. Yeah, within the past ability to record your screen. Super cool. So we're going to look at that and then we're going to talk about managing our content because all videos may not be appropriate for all areas of the business, right? There could be some instructions on how to work with equipment, machinery. There could be videos that discuss sensitive or private information. So we'll talk about how we can scope our video for the appropriate audience or the whole company or specific people. We can do a little video trimming inside of stream. Now you can add subtitles and captions. I have a URL here because. It's not as magic as I have a feeling it will be one day, but this link here docs.microsoft.com link will tell you how to download the text transcript if needed for your stream video. And we're going to talk about adding quizzes and surveys and polls with forms. I came out of the government side of the world. Attestations were a really big deal, really big deal. And this is kind of the first thing I want to show you, even though it's not really starting at point A. 
because I couldn't think of a really good way to transition once I got into demos to showing a video while we're doing the live event and embedding and all the clicking around in a small period of time. So I want to show you what it looks like in just a minute of how you can have people watching the video and then pause the video and ask them questions, ask for feedback, or perhaps this is a human resources video that everyone in the company needs to watch and then a test at the end. Yes, I have watched this video, just a simple button. Back in the day, they would send us PowerPoint slides and then we would have to email back to the poor person in HR that was collecting all the responses that yes, I watched the PowerPoint slides. These days, oh my goodness, it's so cool. And this feels appropriate to be following up last week. If you weren't with us last week, we did a whole webinar on forms. And now we're seeing how forms can come and help us out with our videos. That's so, right. Um, it's actually a video that plays here. There's sound and I'm just kind of talking about should this content stay when we move into SharePoint or should it go? Right, that's what I do. I talk to people and then I chose the point in the video where people need to come in and complete a survey on how you use search. How often do you search? How well does search work for you? Right, multiple sections here. It's not just one yes or no question. They're filling out the form. They submit the form and notice at the bottom right, continue to video. Super cool. And then continue to video and it just picks right back up where it was. How awesome is that? So we're going to jump into. Not that that's not what we're jumping into. We're going to jump into demo now. Do 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 somewhere. On the other screen. <laughs> I have Microsoft Stream. If you haven't been to Stream, oh my goodness, as soon as this webinar is done, go do it. Go play with Stream. And as you know, we have our app launcher. If you don't see Stream in these little preview of your apps, you can always go to app, all apps on the app launcher or the waffle, as we like to call it, and scroll down and you will find Stream. Notice you can't. Oh, it's not on there. There used to be a pin there. I guess we just drag and drop it now. I don't know. That's yeah. changed. Yeah. Didn't there used to be a pin? Yeah, I think so. OK, well, they took our pin away. But here we are. That's OK. When you first come in, I already dismissed it. They give you that little get started with area in stream to kind of give you some ways to get started. But if you're like me, you're probably a button clicker, so it's fun just to go ahead and start discovering videos. These are videos that you have permission to see from your organization. Channels. Channels, think of, think of teams when we talk about channels, right? These are topics of conversation. This is like giving a category to the video. So we see IT has shared some, marketing, human resources. These are channels of information for us. People. Oh, search for people. Let me see. Um, I have to think about the people that might be here, but you can search for people and then find content they may have uploaded. Groups. Groups are everywhere, right? They're like the force. They bind <laughs> Microsoft 365 together. These are the Microsoft 365 groups that my persona Megan here is a member of. Sales and marketing, operations, public initiatives, or digital initiatives. There's a good chance if I were to take the time to toggle over into Teams, I would probably see a team for the majority of these groups, right? Because they're all tied together. Next up, my content. Videos that have been uploaded by me, the groups that I'm a member of, channels, meetings. Did you know? Well, apparently Megan doesn't go to nearly as many meetings as I do. <laughs> Did you know that if you record a meeting in Teams, Stream is the tool that is capturing that video and it will be uploaded here. And you can just go under my content to your meetings and you will find every meeting that you've recorded. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, <clears throat> that's really useful. Yeah, really useful. 
Do you find yourself going to that meetings tab in stream to find those recordings or do you go back and get it from Teams? Yeah, I, since they've introduced that capability now, I have found myself using it more often. Uh, oh. Because again, that was a that was a common question, not only for myself, but for our customers asking, you know, hey, where can I easily go and see? I know I've been recording this, you know, ongoing meeting or this series of meetings regularly. How do I easily go find them? And before that option showed up, you could certainly go into Teams and kind of dig it up from chat history and that kind of thing. But now, mm -hmm. yeah, I use that quite a, quite a bit. But you said a very important word, dig. You had to dig for it mm -hmm. if, if a couple of days had gone by. Now, you have to think about the process, though, because Teams would, is my first thought. But then I don't want to have to dig for anything, so I'm kind of lazy. So, oh, I'll just go to stream and get it because that's where our videos live. Yeah. Fantastic. And then I can create. I can upload a video. Uploading a video is super, super easy, right? I can browse the desktop. Or if I've already got, got it uploaded somewhere, I use a combination of Camtasia or Snagit to record my videos typically. So I can just drag and drop. And it can take a little bit of time depending on how long your video. See my processing here? Call out, and this is something that Richard and I discussed, I don't know, about an hour ago. Setting a video language enables automatic closed captioning. If this is blank, you don't have a language supported, there will not be transcriptions or closed captioning here. Yeah. So you do set your language. Permissions. Who should be able to see this video? Should it be a particular group that I'm a part of? If so, I can just start searching. Um, Contoso, and I can set it so everyone in the Contoso group can see it. I could just let everyone in my company view it, not really worry about groups or channels or particular people. Channel isn't so much a security group as much as I'm saying this is part of human resources or this is a safety video. Mm -hmm. So if someone goes to the safety channel, they find all the safety videos organized together. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. It's a, it's a little little bit of a uh, it has the potential to be a little bit confusing, I guess, in that drop down because it talks about permissions mm -hmm. and yet it shows you, you know, the ability to share with channels. So, you know, as Joy was saying, the channels are not really a permissions boundary. It's really just more organizing the information. Whereas groups is absolutely about permission. Who has access? Spot on. Absolutely. And if I yes, thank you. And while while you're writing there, we did have one question yeah. that popped up. I think that's related right to that dialogue box. Um, number one is if someone starts a recording in Teams before you could start it, is there a way to take ownership of that back end stream or? Is having them add you as an additional owner the only choice? So let me actually. I'm going to cheat, Richard. I'm going to bring up ours. OK, sure. It gets scary when you go real world, but let me pull something over here. And of course, it's going to go slow. So meetings. I feel your pain with the going slow on that there. You no. Know. Here we go. So you could have the, actually can you have them tag you as an additional owner? They would have to come in and kind of change some things around a little bit. But you see, these are the meetings that I have recorded. But if I'm in a meeting, then I do have access to view that recording. So I would need to go search for it. Um, and apologies, I'm trying to think of a really good instance of a meeting I was in recently that was recorded that I don't own. Yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, based on what I understand about how this works is when you have the ability to start a recording, if you click the button, then you just by default become the owner of that recording at that point. Mm -hmm. 
And you can certainly add more people as owners. If you added other people in, you can, you know, say I want two or three other people on my team to also be the owner, which is going to give them, you know, those permissions like being able to edit and delete it and, you know, things like that. But in terms of being able to kind of take over ownership where that person is no longer an owner, I don't know that that's possible. We'd have to look into that a little bit more. I think the yep, best you yep. can do is just add other people, have them add you as owners, essentially. Pretty much. Yeah. And then we have options. Could comments be turned on, right? Do we want to generate the uh, caption file? Notice the, for the subtitles, that little pop up's bugging me. Uh, I could upload a subtitle file. It's going to take some work to get that going. You actually have to have a separate language file to do that. Um, we can grab that URL that I've got in the slides posted in chat as we go so you can get to that. It just takes a little bit more work to get that going. Um, it looks like now that it's been thinking about that video a little bit, I've got some thumbnails that I could pick from, but I'm just gonna go ahead and publish it. Now, if I share it, right, that's gonna give me a link, a direct link that I can go give to people. Notice it gives me the option to put that inside of a Yammer group, or I could get the code to embed it on a SharePoint page. Oh yes, fantastic. And you can play it right in your SharePoint pages. The stream web parts are pretty great. Hey Joy, we have some more questions. What you got? Okay, if you record a meeting, does everyone who was invited to that meeting have access? or just those who actually attended. I have, this person's having issues with people not having access when they share the link as a follow-up to the meeting and then try to make it available to the entire, she has to make it available to the entire company. Interesting, I've not had any issues. It should be anyone that was invited unless they're outside of your organization. Right. That at this point in time, cannot share a stream video externally. So you kind of have to like save it to OneDrive and do an anonymous link, something like that. Um, I've not run into issues with people in the environment not being able to get to it. Oh, look, stream just let me know my video is done. Yeah, just to echo that, <clears throat> that's my understanding of it as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how you set up that meeting if you set it up to be uh you know a meeting within a team uh it, everybody who is a member of that team would have the ability to access that whether they showed up or not to the meeting but if you did what they refer to as a private meeting recording so you know you just went into teams and went into your calendar and said create new meeting and you just started inviting people from across the business and they weren't all part of a single team for that matter then the way it's supposed to work is everybody who was invited to the meeting will have access to the recording regardless of whether they attended it or not at least that's how it's supposed to work so certainly would be interested to get a better understanding if you're having some problems with that scenario specifically yeah you know, let us know and you know maybe we can dig that up a little bit more but uh but if it doesn't work that way it's just simply not then uh might need to get in touch with microsoft support I'm not sure about that one yep yep Okay, um, somebody else is wondering if they can combine two stream recordings into one. Not yet. You can trim. So if you got weird start at the beginning or dead space at the end, you can do some trimming. Um, I am I have a loud neighbor going by at the moment. Sorry about the road noise. Uh, <laughs> but I have been doing quite a bit of video recordings at the present time, and I do have to go to a paid third party tool to yeah. splice videos together when that's needed. But user voice, go to the user voice people, ask for it. Is yeah, that but that is, that, that is an option for you now if you have another utility like <clears throat> Camtasia or you know there are a number of other video uh, tools that you could use. Um, basically, if you have the ability to download the video from stream and that's typically reserved for the owner or owners of the video, but if you have the ability to download, then you could potentially take two separate videos, splice them together, like Joy said, 
and then just re-upload that to stream as this sort of single Uber video now in this case. But yeah, not not just built into the service, not at the moment. I'm going to say yeah, and I'm saying that not having seen anything about it being talked about, but the way Microsoft is releasing functionality, I have to believe that's something that they could see being on the roadmap in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe that's a Jewish SharePoint Christmas wish list. Oh. I'm going to start one. I'm going to start one. <laughs> uh, so live events, it's very similar if you've ever created one inside of Teams. Um, if you have an encoder and all that stuff here, you could configure one. Otherwise, Stream will handle that for you. Name it, give it a description, upload an image of a fancy thumbnail, and then schedule it. All right, start date, start time, end date, end time. Permissions again, it's going to be very similar to that of just uploading a video, right? Who's going to be able to view the video in this live event, right? Is it going to be group based, channel based? Is it all company, right? Everybody. No, thank you. That was just that was just a click stream. And then down below, those same options exist here. Pretty cool. I will confess. Should I conf I'll confess, right? We're friends here. We're just sitting around talking about stream. I had no idea you could do live events in stream until literally last week. <laughs> no idea. I, I kind of knew it was a thing in Yammer. Um, obviously, we know it's a thing in stream, right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, sorry, teams. But yeah, pretty darn cool. And we also now have the record stream option. You can select your webcam, you can select microphone. One thing to keep in mind on this, you can only record for up to 15 minutes. Yeah. So if you are recording a safety video or a training presentation, if it's short, go for it. Or you might just need to break it up into two separate bits in that case. Could be. Yeah. So I found it interesting. Oh, sorry, Richard, go ahead. I was just saying, yeah, you could do part one, part two, if you needed to, you know, to work around the current 15 minute limit that is there with record screen. And I don't know that that's a bad thing. You know, if you've been paying attention to the training videos that Microsoft has provided these days for the applications, they're typically pretty short. Um, very, the, the phrase I heard, um, in a Microsoft video was snackable. <laughs> yeah. They're just little snaps of information. So if yeah. you could keep it 5, 10, 15 minutes, because how many of us can really take an hour and a half a few times a week to learn stuff all at once, unless we're doing it after hours? Yeah. We're busy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think even, you know, just, just psychologically, whenever you, whenever you can come across uh, mm -hmm. some information that you think might be useful, you know, before you even click on the video play button, if it shows you that that video is in fact only, you know, three and a half minutes long, psychologically, there's kind of a decision there. You're like, ah, yeah, I got three and a half minutes. Why not, right? Click Why on not? it, let the video run, uh, take in some knowledge and then go. Whereas if you're looking at, you know, something online and you see that it's a, you know, hour and four minute video, you're kind of like, OK, <laughs> maybe I'll come back to this at some point whenever I've got, you know, that much time to, to spare. All right, and I'm actually doing a screen record now. There it was. Awesome. It was amazing. Four seconds of awesomeness. And now literally, I, if I love my four seconds of awesomeness, I can upload it to stream. And it's like, where do you want to go? What do you want to call it? What is this? Yeah, I think it's just another great example of, you know, Microsoft doing, uh, you know, some amazing things in the cloud that allow them to bring more value to the service without having to charge you, you know, additional for this. You know, this is just coming mm -hmm. along as a benefit of having a subscription to Microsoft 365. So. Absolutely. And they'll probably, yeah, they'll probably just keep doing more with it. I'm going to use the My Content button to jump over to My Content. Oh, look, there's my four seconds of awesome. It's already here. 
Notice we've got buttons all to the right. I can see who can see these videos. I could add it to my watch list if this was someone else's video and I want to save that for later or I haven't had time to go watch the all hands, right? I could add that to my watch list. And to a group or channel, hey, my, my group needs to see this four seconds of awesome. I could do that, I could make sure that this is something my group sees. Save. I can also edit, update video details. So four seconds of awesome, maybe that A should be capital. I could give it a description. Uh-oh, I don't have a language. Oh, it's always at the top. Okay, there it is. Here's the viewers. Do I want to change a thumbnail? There's, it doesn't change, right? It was only four seconds. Yeah, is it going to auto generate the captions? Yes, if there was talking, it absolutely would. Yeah. And then you've got your apply button here. I always want to come down here to find it, but they do give you apply right up here. Check this out. So earlier, let me just pause that. Um, when we watch the little demo of a video transitioning over to a form, this is where that happens. Transcript, if there was sound, it will take some time, right? If you upload an hour long video, the transcript will not be available instantaneously. It could take, it could take a couple of hours for that to be available because there's a lot of AI stuff happening in the background. So be aware of that. Interactivity is where I can add my form. So honestly, all I have to do is go to forms. Here's an untitled one. We'll just open that up. Click my share button and get the link. Anyone the link? Only people in my organization. If you're putting this in a stream video, I'm going to wager it's inside of your organization. All right, because that's only where those stream videos can go. So we just hit that copy button, come back. Wherever this is here, the position on the timeline, that's where it's going to pause the video and transition into that form. I will say um, in that video where I added it, I wanted to put it kind of in between seconds on the timeline and I couldn't do that. Just know that that may be a thing. It may have to stop just literally a second early or a second mm -hmm. late. Mm -hmm. But if we get up on a second, maybe we just need to drink one less cup of coffee that day. Paste it. Could put the name of the form for where it's going to go. Form, spell check works. And I add that to the timeline. And you can have multiple forms throughout. If you want to make this very interactive, show them a little bit of information, ask some questions to get some feedback or ask them, maybe you're quizzing, right? Maybe this is a little bit of an internal certification thing going on, mm -hmm. right? Are good options. Have you used this with any of your clients yet, Richard? You know, I haven't yet, uh, but I am certainly going to highlight it more now uh, because, yeah. <laughs> Because it really is, I mean, again, these are all tools. If you've got a Microsoft 365 subscription, these are all tools that are just part of the platform, you know, eligible subscriptions, I should say. And, uh, you know, if you're not really taking advantage of all of these really slick integrations between them, then you're just not getting the most value that you possibly could, right? So, so yeah, I think this is super cool. And, you know, at mm -hmm. the very least, if you didn't necessarily want to interrupt the flow of a video, with a form, you could do absolutely put one at the end, right? One right yeah. at the very smack end of the video. That is just a, you know, like Joy said, maybe it's a quick um, learning check. If it's some sort of an internal certification thing, you want to just check everybody's knowledge on, um, or if it's just feedback, right? You just want to get some feedback on what was discussed in that video or presented in that video. You can just get some quick feedback and what better place to do it than right there at the end of the video rather than sending some follow on message and so forth, you know, so I think it's super cool. Um, ready and for a quick question? Ready. ready for mm -hmm. a quick question? Oh, what we got? Okay, so uh, 
One question says, what is the difference of hosting a meeting as a Teams meeting or a Teams live event, I assume, versus a stream live event meeting? What is the difference between Teams meeting, team live events, or, or this live event and stream? So the stream meeting or meeting live event is going to be more just video centric. Uh, and I'm coming at this having never done one, <laughs> but it's not going to be quite as interactive as what we've got going on here. Oh, my four seconds of awesome is done. Whereas, you know, in Teams, we have our Q&A panel. Uh, we have the chat. Uh, stream is going to be more focused on viewing a video. So perhaps a town hall viewing that town hall together. Um, it would be live, right? We So the focus is going to be a little different. The Teams live event will be more interactive and you can invite people from the outside like we're doing here today. We're all coming together to meet the stream live event. Stream is internal only. Today, now, at this point in time, so your audience is very different. Yeah, and then and then to tie that up then. So when would you use a Teams meeting like a normal Teams meeting? versus a Teams live event, for example? Oh, every day, multiple times a day, we do the Teams meetings, right? We we have our internal Monday morning scrums. We have our sales calls on Tuesdays. We have our client meetings throughout the day. So anything where you would do your traditional, interactive, everybody has a seat at the table to talk meeting, Teams meeting. But then we have these more I don't know, is this formal? I don't think of myself as, as a formal webinar person, <laughs> right? But for better or worse, all y'all that are tuning in are muted, right? There's no way to unmute, but we can chat and we can conversate and chat and Q&A. So that would definitely not be appropriate for a customer where Richard and I would just talk at them and not let them talk back, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so just to pile on to what Joy is saying. So yeah, that's the differentiation between doing a normal Teams meeting, uh, where you want the ability for all the attendees to be able to have voice and to have audio mm -hmm. and also to be able to share video in that meeting and participate kind of equally. Um, today, I think they just recently lim uh, lifted the limit for attendees from 250 to 350 now in a single Teams meeting. So that's pretty cool that you can have up to 350 people in a Microsoft Teams meeting at one time. Um, whereas a, a live event in Teams or Yammer or Stream, like we're talking about today, is really intended for kind of more one-way push of information. So like, mm -hmm. you know, a company-wide event or, you know, a leadership connection meeting of some sorts, uh, it's really intended to be able to um, host up to thousands of people at one time. At runtime, Microsoft said 10,000. And recently, with all the stuff going on today, they've actually lifted that temporarily up to 20,000 attendees crazy. can join a live event at one time. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. So that's the differentiation between whether you want it to be a meeting where everybody has the ability to speak and show video or whether it's more just a one way push. Since we have forms pulled up, we're kind of talking about forms. One thing that's pretty cool that you can do in forms. Let's see, question. I can't even. Are we living the stream? Look at that, it's terrible. Richard pointed this out to me. This little insert media. We didn't get a chance to show this in the forums webinar, but here we are talking about stream. Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be a picture. It can be a video. Mm -hmm. You can paste your Microsoft stream or YouTube URL right here yep. and then add that video. So if you wanted to show people a video and then ask them questions, but the focus is on the questions and the feedback more than the content. Do it from forms, yeah. right? Or maybe you've got multiple. Oh, Richard, because you can only do 15 minutes. Yeah. Watch this 15 minutes, fill this out. Watch this five minutes, fill it out, right? Wh what makes sense? Where's your focus? Are we learning things? So we really need to be more absorbed in the content and then ask a couple of questions? Or do we need the questions to enrich the form, right? 
it's it's just it goes back and forth where the focus is we really want you to watch this video but we're really focusing more on the answers yeah i just think that's really cool so back to what you were asking earlier joy so you haven't really taken advantage of that with, with customers just yet about embedding forms into stream videos but certainly plan to now and sure. really being able to showcase the the integration that goes kind of both ways between stream and forms, which is, you know, again, that's really cool in the platform. You can have a stream video and embed these forms so that people can interact while they're watching the video. And then vice versa, you can have a form for, you know, gathering feedback or whatever it may be um, internally in this case, if it's going to be stream externally, if you wanted to have it where it was maybe on YouTube, but mm -hmm. you can be focusing on the questions and then also embed some video easily into the question so that you can have again more interactivity or more sharing of information i just think that's super slick oh it absolutely is and of course this doesn't want to get out of my way i want to get that out of the way for a minute so the capabilities they've started adding on here really take what we can do above and beyond anything we've ever been able to do from the sharepoint side of the world so I want to mention one of the things Richard asked in the form when we kicked off the webinar and something I've got some clients kind of going and thinking about right now is do is it still appropriate convenient to store videos in a SharePoint document library or media mm -hmm. library whatever mm -hmm. is it wrong um, no but is it going to work as well as we would like it to work no it's not, it's gonna be slow and you're gonna be missing out on some of these really awesome features that are just built right into stream. So I would encourage you, if you haven't thought about pulling some of those videos out of um, your document libraries or libraries inside of SharePoint, or maybe even testing one or two instead of putting them out on YouTube. And I know a lot of us have corporate YouTube channels, we do. Um, especially because we need to share with you all. If you can't watch the whole webinar, you can go back and watch the recording on YouTube. It's yeah. Awesome. But if it's for us in the company, we can pull it out of public space and put it inside of our security trimmed environment inside a stream. And that makes me feel a lot more comfy cozy than having potentially proprietary data living out there in YouTube. No, no offense to YouTube at all. I know they do a really good job with what they do. Just say it. <laughs> Government, hashtag paranoid, right? Yeah, exactly. Just saying. <laughs> and let me think. Oh, Richard, you pointed something out and I haven't talked about it yet. Search. Yes. Can I get a shout out for how awesome Microsoft Search is? Yes, it is. It really is. It keeps getting better all the time. All the time. So I just went to my search box and I typed in Contoso. And I'm asking search to bring back any videos that have the word Contoso in them. But guess what, friends? It's not just in the title. Notice what it's also showing me. 11 seconds into the Contoso rollout, Contoso is mentioned. And this link would take me to that point in time in the video. Oh my gosh. So you don't have to watch the whole thing to find what you're looking for. Right? Yeah. Ultimate life hack. That is about as cool as it gets, quite honestly. I mean, <laughs> you know, again, I think I think in the poll when we took the, the beginning of the webinar, there were a couple of respondents that said, you know, our organization is not currently using any kind of an enterprise video platform. And that's, you know, not uh, an uncommon response, actually. I think, and oftentimes the reasoning behind that is that, um, you know, some businesses have just not yet gotten to a point where they've found out how can they treat this as like a first class asset within the organization, you know, documents and even web page content and things like that typically tend to be the most common ways that an email, obviously email, and etc tend to be the first ways that people think about really getting access to information and finding and searching information but video content tends to kind of fall by the wayside for this reason alone if anything because you know okay so we've got the video it got created it's 30 minutes long or whatever 
Now what do we do with it? Well, first of all, where do we put it so that everybody can get to it easily? Um, do they have to be inside the network? Can they have to be? Can they be outside the network? Can they get to it from a mobile device? But then, just like Joy was showing just now, if you had the ability to be able to actually search the spoken content inside the video to find something that you know was relevant, you know, you're like, we had this town hall meeting and they talked about something about, you know, the acquisition of something going to be something transformative for our business. I can't remember what they said. But you can just type in word acquisition and then lo and behold, it pulls up a video and not only that, but takes you exactly to that point in the video where that word was spoken. That's super cool, right? That really changes your organization's way of looking at how you can leverage video based content. Again, more like a first class citizen in that regard, because you've got all the text there essentially. It makes it all searchable. Super, super slick. And when you're inside the video, if you've got the transcription going, you can do control F and it will go find in there where that word is. When I was doing the service adoption specialist certification course, yeah. um, some of those videos just had a lot of information and I thought, OK, wait, wait, wait. Where is it when they said this? And I, I was like, I'm just going to try it. I didn't know and it worked. I was like, that's magic because it took me right to that point in the video. Yeah. Awesomeness. Enjoy the you. Yeah. You get asked by yes. customers, you know, so how how uh, accurate is this transcription that occurs in the service? You know, is it really, you know, going to actually produce the words and what in the context of the sentences that are being said? Or, you know, is there any way to correct those or, you know, what do you do? What do you how do you respond to that? Um, I give my um, wishy washy consultant answer kind of <laughs> sort of sort of kind of um, because I noticed in those videos that's the first time I was really paying attention to the transcriptions and stream and you wouldn't necessarily see all of the punctuation mm -hmm. or depending on someone's accent or like my southern accent my R's and ours kind of flip a coin what did she say we don't know so it can confuse it with that sometimes but that's fixable Right. If you wanted to take the time, you can download that transcription, clean it up and put it back. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool to do that. You, you can even you can even. So as Joy is mentioning, you can you can make edits. If you are, in fact, the owner of the video, you can make edits to the transcription when the transcription comes back. Uh, again, it's going to depend on the length of the video and kind of what's going on in the service at any point in time. But if you've ensure that you put what spoken language was was spoken during the video. So video language is English and you're saying that you wanted to generate that caption file. Uh, you can as the owner go in and just make simple edits and corrections so you can scroll through the transcription itself and say, OK, here's where, you know, I was actually referring to somebody's name. But what the service heard, you know, sounded like some common word or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can very easily go in and make those kinds of changes. So it's super cool and allows you that flexibility to make things more accurate. Absolutely. And last but not least, as we're coming up, actually a couple minutes over, but that's OK. I won't tell if you don't. Check it out. Mobile. Yes, yes. OK, so the, the icon super easy. Here's all my awesome. Microsoft stuff, but we've got this nice little stream icon. You do have to log in, of course. Notice I can come up here. I could upload a video if I had one on my phone because I maybe I was doing a recording on the go. Oh, I should do a Joy of SharePoint on the go. Oh, could yes. Upload it here. <laughs> I kind of did last week. <laughs> but, uh, right? Do it. Make it available offline means let me get to it on my phone anytime, any place, regardless of the internet connection. I can add to my watch list. Edit feels ambitious, but okay. Share. So I got my good on the go mobile capabilities right yeah, now. And that's a really interesting one just to bring up while you're on that that little pop up uh, menu right there. So because I've been asked this question before is can I in stream either download the video or somehow make the video available offline so I don't have to be connected to the network and strangely enough at least at the present time 
you can only do that on the mobile app. So like Joy is showing, you can go into the mobile app and say, I want to make this available offline. It basically downloads that video to the device so that you can mm -hmm. then be able to uh, watch that video, you know, if you're on the plane. But from your browser, again, the only people that have the ability to download the video are the owners of the video. So folks that have the ability to view don't immediately have the rights to be able to download the video. So it's kind of a strange little uh, shortcoming, if you will, I guess, in the service, because I think people would like to be able to do that from their from their PC as well. For sure. So now we know you go to your phone, you download it, and then you put it in your OneDrive app. <laughs> and to your desktop. Yeah. I Perfect. mean, yeah. Yeah. oh, I knew it. Built away. I knew it. I knew it. I love it. <laughs> um, we have uh, we have a question. Um, I think we could just squeeze it in. Sure. Sure. Uh, can you automatically translate the transcription, let's say from English to Chinese? My understanding, I'll just jump in. My understanding is today the only languages that the service transcribes is English and Spanish. I don't believe, and I'll have to double check on that even, but I don't believe it's currently transcribing to other languages. Um, do you know any difference than that, Joy? Have you seen any other information in your researching before this webinar? Yeah, let me take a look because I know you can select other languages, you know, to be your default. Um, so I would think there would be a way. Pondering that, right, because there's got to be a workaround. Yeah, it's good, that's a good question. And, and that could have been something that's changed in the service since the last time I looked at it. But um, yeah, let us let us research that one a little bit and then follow up for sure. Um, mm -hmm. One other thing I was just going to point out and enjoy, maybe you were going to mention it already, is in the mobile app, uh, at, the, at the very least on iOS, I think you can do this on Android too, but you know, when you hit that plus uh, sign up in the top right corner, for the longest time, all you could do is really upload a video, but now you actually can record your own video directly from your device. So that's pretty slick, actually. So again, you know, you're just out and about and you want to just record a video directly in stream, you can start that video recording, um, you know, video when you're out on location somewhere. And then it's actually fairly sophisticated with being able to uh, go in and, you know, add uh, different effects to it and so forth and do certain editing and things of that nature before you're actually posting it in stream. So that's pretty cool. Again, I think that's something that, um, uh, a lot of people don't really tend to think about in terms of from the business side of things. I think a lot of people take for granted that kind of stuff in their personal life. They're like, I'm going on vacation and I'm going to take a bunch of photos or I'm going to take some video of you know what we're doing. But to be able to do that directly in the stream app to post that for business related content, I think that that's also really, that's a really impressive feature. And that's super cool. I want to do it. <laughs> I mean, what's the point of having all these awesome things if you don't have to get fun? While I play with this, oh, do we have any other questions? No, nope. that yeah, really wraps up the questions. Exception. Oh, look at that. It's very meta right there. Yeah, so here's my big screen. Yay, here's all my post-it notes. <laughs> oh, look, <a> sticker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm actually recording. That's good. Oh, yeah, that's. That's yes, it. I think you know some some businesses where the executive team is really that's something that would make sense to them, right? If they're kind of tech savvy and they are the culture of the business is the type where they would be willing to go and and just create little video snippets or little videos from wherever they are. Maybe they're doing like a road show, you know, to go visit all of these various company locations across the globe or wherever and um, you know, if you just whip out your mobile device and you've got stream, they could just start recording a video, you know, a five minute little thing where they're just interviewing somebody from the business and then just quickly post it up into stream for all to be able to view. That's again, that's cool. Brilliant. That's really cool. Brilliant. And, you know, we have a lot of clients and customers that have storefronts, facilities, things like that. And yeah. to be able to go, go, OK, storm came through last night. Let me take Instead of just pictures, you could actually get very detailed and do a video of walking the scene and pointing out the damage and 
yeah. you know, things like that. You can tell I live in Oklahoma. We have a lot of storms. So. <laughs> I love it. We do have one last question. Awesome. If you download for offline use on mobile, can you then share with anyone as this might be a confidentiality concern? That might be. Let's see. Share. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a confidentiality concern. But now let's think about that, though. I'm going to send the how to deliver virtual CIEs to my husband. He was the one that had the little red heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let's, oh, it's sending him to a login.microsoftonline.com link. Interesting. Yeah. So it does make it does make you think though, like as the the situation you described earlier, Joy, I think is valid. Uh, let's say you did a view offline. Can you then take that video, the offline video, and move it somewhere? Like, can you move it into your OneDrive or something, and then share it from there? Uh, and you know what? Let's talk about that because this goes back to that age-old question: Should we put stuff? here or there or this or that yeah. um, are read only people that we put inside of SharePoint. They can look, but they can't touch, but they can download. Yeah. Once you download something, you can email it. You could print it. You could fax it to your closest friends and family. You can do whatever you want with it because you've printed it. So you start to ask yourself the question, what are we concerned about the audience that may download it? or the information that's somewhere that could be downloaded. Right. Both IRM time, right? Policies, procedures. If Are you worried about, oh, you know, we've got this one person and they do crazy stuff. Time to have a conversation with the person that you're concerned about. Oh, we can't have that content where anyone could ever download it. You need to put it somewhere else then. Yeah. Right, so it's really talking about trusting people to do their job. If you're going to make it available to all company, do we trust all company? Right, it it's it's a hard conversation. It's really hard. My husband is currently texting me, and he said takes me to a sign in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dream for the win. <laughs> cool. All right, asked and answered. Thank you, Stuart Apple, for joining today's webinar as a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. What's the use of having a spouse if you can't, you know, rogue them into doing things they don't want to do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right, well, okay. we are, I know technically we're supposed to end at 1245. I think you all are used to us never ending at 1245. Thank you for hanging out with us. You guys always ask great questions. You keep us on our toes. Appreciate you all being here. Next week, oh, I guess I could go to the slides. Next week, yes, we did that. We're gonna be talking about Outlook on the web. If you have not tried the mobile Outlook web recently, oh my goodness, you're missing out. I, I, um, I've used it exclusively for the last two weeks just to see if I could. I sure can. Yeah. yeah, this one, this one's definitely near and dear to my heart. You know, I, I kind of purposefully went on a desktop Outlook desktop diet for a while just to see, you know, how how is it going to work and and uh, you know, for me and my workflow, quite honestly, I I love using Outlook on the web. I think it just suits me. It's really nice, lightweight, fast. It does what I need it to do. Um, so yeah, please join us next week for that webinar. I think you're gonna you're gonna find that really interesting if you haven't taken a look at Outlook on the web in a browser in a while. Um, and then just kind of stealing some of Joy's thunder here. So you've got some of our information here. You can get in touch with us a couple of different ways. You can follow us on Twitter. Please do that. You can certainly send us email. And those QR codes there actually take us directly to our LinkedIn profile. So please do connect with us on LinkedIn as well. And that's it. This was great. Awesome job, Joy. Well, thank you. Same to you, sir. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining and asking questions and being part of this conversation. 
We will catch you all on. Oh, look, I'm a bad person. It's not going to be on Monday, is it? It's going to be on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It is Tuesday, Tuesday, but you did get the day. Yeah, it is the 9th. Tuesday the 9th. Yeah. Oh, bad, bad presenter. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> We forgive you, Joy. We forgive thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. We're out. Enjoy the rest of your day and have an awesome week. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.